something caught my eye recently and I need to tell you about it. DC's capital again taking the reins as the country's cycling capital thanks to a declaration approved by city council. The city of Victoria, BC declared itself the biking capital of Canada. This news caught my attention for a couple of reasons. My first thought was, wait a second, you can't just unilaterally declare yourself the capital of anything. My second thought was, has nobody in the city ever been to Montreal? No, there is a city that I think deserves to be called the capital of cycling. And my third thought was, well, this is silly. These competitions between cities for bike friendliness does not help anyone. It is not productive. And then my fourth thought was, well, wait a second. Actually, if you think about two great bike cities, hmm, I wonder if there's something about these cities that lends themselves to bike friendliness that maybe other cities can learn from. And my fifth thought was, mm, I'm hungry, I feel like a sandwich. And my sixth thought was, let's make a video. So here we are. Hey everybody, I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling, bike commuting, and the ways we get around our cities. And if you like this video, please think about subscribing or becoming a Shifter member. There's a link down in my description. And to do this, we will use the cutting edge video technique known as the whiteboard. On this side is Victoria, represented here, of course, by Queen Victoria. Like, clearly that's Queen Victoria, you couldn't tell. Uh, and Montreal on this side, represented by the king of bagels, the Montreal bagel. Sorry, New York, Montreal's were better. But let's take a look at these two cities and see what we can learn. First, just a bit about these uh, cities for those who don't know. Victoria is the capital of British Columbia on the west coast of Canada. It's actually on Vancouver Island. It's pretty small. It's a city of about 100,000 people. And Montreal, by contrast, is on the eastern part of the country. It's an old city and much bigger. It's got a population of about 4 million in Greater Montreal, 1.7 million on sort of the island part of Montreal, which is uh, a bit more urban. And just how bikeable are these cities anyway? Well, pretty good by at least a couple of measures. So the website WalkScore has a bikeability measure and it ranks Victoria at an 80 out of 100 and Montreal at a 73, both of which are great scores in the context of Canada and the US. And People for Bikes in its annual city ratings in the last go round ranks Victoria a 67 and Montreal a 71. Why do I hit the record button at the bottom of a hill? Whew. My first stop was the national census, and there's reams of data about both of these cities. And so I just kind of went scrolling through the census spreadsheets, looking for similarities or differences that jumped out at me that might help explain why both cities are bikeable. And generally, demographically, I'd say the cities are pretty similar. They definitely fit into like the normal range of Canadian municipalities. But there are some interesting differences. Victoria skews a little bit older in its population than Montreal. Montreal is definitely more ethnically diverse than Victoria, and housing affordability is definitely worse in Victoria than Montreal. And while these probably have some influence over bikeability, I wanted to dive in and look a bit deeper at things that might have a direct impact on that score. Uh, just comparing Victoria and Montreal, I didn't find very helpful, so we need a control group, and so I'm going to add a city into this mix. And this city, I thought, would just be like a typical North American city that hasn't done a lot for cycling, that is sort of built around that car-centric suburban model. And I'm sorry, Winnipeg, but it's going to be you. Now, Winnipeg is a city in the middle of the country that um, has not, it's not terrible for cycling. It's a beautiful city. I, I really enjoy visiting there. There's lots of great things happening, but I would say it has a reputation for not building a lot to support cycling over the years. And also, you know, they've been debating 10 years whether they should just allow pedestrians to cross their main street downtown. So just for that, sorry, Winnipeg, you're the control group. The percentage of people driving a car, truck, or van to work, quite similar actually, Victoria, 53%. Montreal, 58%. Our control group, Winnipeg, just for context, 83%. So if you think of Winnipeg as being in the control, both of these cities are doing a pretty good job getting people out of their cars for their commute. Now, that's the number of people driving to work. What about the number of people using public transit? There you go. Montreal, much more of a transit city because of that subway and a better bus system. Victoria is a much smaller geographic city, so I feel like they just haven't built out that transit system yet. For the control group, Winnipeg, 9%. So Victoria is doing better than the control group, but Montreal is head and shoulders above that. 23% to 10%, which, what do you think this is? Yes, it's the people walking to work. The control group of Winnipeg is a lowly 5%. So yeah, both cities have more people walking, but Victoria, wow, that's pretty impressive for a North American city. 
I think this probably has to do with the fact that it's pretty small geographically, like I just said, and it's the distances are short. Now let's get to the one you've been waiting for. This is a video about cycling after all. Percentage of people riding their bikes to work. Now, just for context, Winnipeg's is 1.3%. And so the number of people in these cities riding their bikes as commuters, Victoria, 9.6, Montreal, 3.4. But this is a very impressive number for a North American context. I would say actually this is pretty good for a North American city. Most North American cities, including the one I live in here in Calgary, hovering around one or 2%. So both of those are doing quite well when it comes to bike ability. Okay, now a bit more on the makeup of the city because I do think sort of the built environment has a lot to do with how many people ride their bikes. So let's look at a couple of measures here. So this is the percentage of the population in each city that owns its own household. Winnipeg, the number is 63%. I would think a lot of those are single family homes that are owned by people. So definitely more renters in these cities. Now here's a number. And this is the number of people living in dwellings with only one bedroom. So Winnipeg, that's 17%. So as you can see, both of these are quite a bit higher than the uh, control group. So I think that's also a sign that there are more smaller places to live in and more renters. And I do think that has something to do with the number of people who walk in bike places. Now let's get to that, the all important number. This is population density. Now for the control group, 1,623. So these are like three times higher than that control group. So population density, I feel like is directly related to walkability and bikeability because you get more people in a smaller amount of space. And if the distances are short, uh, you're more likely to ride or walk a bike. It also means you're more likely to have amenities in your neighborhood that you don't have to get into a car and drive out to. Another thing I was really interested in is car use in each of the city, automobile use. And unfortunately the census did not have a lot of information that I could use to compare, but I did find some interesting information. So here's one thing that struck me as interesting and maybe not intuitive is that both Montreal and Victoria, the rate of car ownership had been climbing faster than the population growth. That's interesting to me because both as bike friendly cities, you think that number might be going down. That being said, I did find a report from Victoria that said since 2018, the distance traveled each week by people living in the city in their car has reduced by about 20 percent so there may be more cars but people seem to be using them less and in montreal similarly there's a pretty significant difference in car and automobile use between those who live in the more dense island of montreal and then the less dense suburbs around it those who live on the island of montreal average 19 kilometers each weekday and it's 34 kilometers for those who live out in the suburbs so that's a pretty significant difference and i think it does show you that both cities have something where people don't need to use their automobile for everyday errands as much as they would in other cities okay can we put the spreadsheets away now although that was the worst spreadsheet imaginable um, because it's tempting to sort of go down this rabbit hole of data but I do think there's other things to think about when you think about what makes these cities so great for cycling. One is politics. When I say politics you probably immediately think of like the left and right political spectrum and I would say within the context of Canada both Montreal and Victoria do sit on the left side of the spectrum. There's a stereotype that cycling is a leftist or a liberal issue, but I would say like the progress being made in Canadian cities is not always fall along that spectrum. Like, yes, these two cities do tend to, to, to the liberal side of things, but there are conservative cities where things are happening here as well. What's more interesting to me, I think, than the sort of left-right divide is the sort of political or jurisdictional makeup of these cities. So. For a long time, I thought that unicities or cities that have one city council that administers a large area, such as Toronto or Calgary, as compared to a lot of cities where they have multiple jurisdictions in a greater metro area, I thought those unicities would have an easier way of building bike lanes because they didn't have to get the cooperation with all of these jurisdictions. But this might be pointing to the opposite. So both Victoria and Montreal are made up of multiple jurisdictions. And what seems to be happening is that the urban jurisdictions, uh, that's where the bike lanes are being built. That's where the cycleability is coming in in both cities. It's those inner city uh, boroughs or jurisdictions that are really building things out. And when those outer rings, those outer suburbs see that, then they are slowly getting on board. They're much slower to do it, but they're seeing the benefits of those cycling lanes and they are slow to building it out. What tends to happen in the unicities, cycling proposals just get outvoted by the suburban city councillors. And so counterintuitively for me is that those multiple jurisdictions might be a political advantage in those cities.
There's another factor here that I'm going to call cycling innovation. And I think both Montreal and Victoria have displayed this innovation in their own ways. So for Montreal, I think a big innovation for it is the Bixie bike share system. Now, I know most cities these days have a bike share system, but in Canada and USA and in North America, the first city to do it was Montreal. And Montreal pioneered the system. It worked out the kinks. It like struggled through the initial challenges. And from there, it spread. Now, I know Montreal wasn't the first city to have a bike share, but it really proved the case. Now, Victoria has an innovation called the Downtown Bike Valet Park. Bike valets are not a new thing. Lots of cities offer them at you know, festivals or events where a group of volunteers will volunteer to park your bike and keep it safe for you so you don't have to worry about it getting stolen. What's different in Victoria is that they have funded through taxpayer uh, money a permanent year-round downtown bike valet. And so all kinds of people can ride down and safely leave their bike and not worry about it getting stolen. And this program has proved very successful, not only in the numbers of cyclists it's attracting, but also the different kinds of cyclists. These kind of innovations, I think, are interesting to those cities, and they may have something to do with the bike friendliness of the city in general. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is something I'm going to call vibes because I do feel like when you're in a great bike city it just feels like a bike city it's got the vibe of a bike city and I feel like Montreal and Victoria both have these but in different ways now what I feel like when I'm in Montreal is like the liveliness of the streets it's just like so fun to be on the streets because there's so much activity there's art there's people out enjoying it this summer they've pedestrianized an amazing 10 downtown streets in Montreal and those streets are just like so fun to walk down there's always something happening and cycling is an integral part of that street life I mean it just brings more people out it reduces the hostility of the automobile environment and cycling is absolutely a key part of the liveliness of the streets there now the vibe in Victoria is much different but I was equally impressed with the the vibe the, the bike vibes there the vibe there I would say feels more like a family friendly bike vibe like I feel like there are cargo bikes everywhere there is a great a uh, couple of great uh, family friendly bike shops in the neighborhood. Just, on some of the residential streets, they've done a really good job in making it difficult for cars to speed down those residential roads. They've got filters so that cyclists can pass through, but automobiles need to turn. Both of those cities had a vibe. Both felt like bike cities. Okay, so let's get back to that original question. Is, is there something about these two cities that lends them towards bike friendliness? And I would say yes and no. Yes, there are some characteristics of these cities that help. But there are enough differences that you can't say that these cities are exactly alike. But there is one last thing that I think is really important is that both cities have committed to cycling and over a sustained period of time. And so, you know, I was in Victoria two years ago and I was really impressed after just two years how much improvement's been made. Uh, the last time I was in Montreal, there was a distance of about maybe five years. And again, I was blown away by how much work had been done. And so both of these cities have committed to like ongoing improvements and you can see it. I think what shows is like these cities, despite their differences, by committing to cycling, they're making a huge difference in their cities and I would say in the lives of the people who live there because I truly believe more bike friendly cities are just better for everybody in the city. So is there something to take away from this? Yes, I think any city can do this. They just have to like commit to it, get everything lined up and start working on it. You don't need to have all those factories. You can probably build with what you've got. So anyway, I found this quite interesting. I hope you learned something from it as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.